Hi and welcome to this video. Um, basically we're going to be looking at installing the drivers for the NTE USB adapter. Um, as you can pretty much see from the screen I'm doing this on uh, Mint Linux. Um, so basically to do this um, you need to go and grab the drivers. So download them from Scilabs. Um, if you've not done it before you will need to create an account so that you can get into the download section um, it's pretty much just set it up with an email address um, and then you can go through and find those files and download those you if it's a little bit um, temperamental and basically when you sign in it may take you to just like the home page so if you if it does just do um, a search on the website. I think I've killed the browser since then, so it's not on there. Um, it might bring up. Um, yeah, basically, do a search for the CP210X USB to UART bridge VCP drivers, um, and you should be able to find them. And basically, that is the link to it. Um, it'll probably ask you to sign in. Uh, mm. When you click on the downloads page, maybe. No, oh, no. Okay. Let's carry on. Uh, it's got the universal drivers, uh, Mac and Windows. Um, click the show five more, and then you should find the Linux ones. Uh, these are the ones that I downloaded. Um, click on that. Uh, this is where it asks you to type in your email. Um, remember me it's probably because I'm in a different browser yeah I am so um, yeah basically log into that um, let's see if I can do it on the other one when it wakes up got two now right so um, there we go still labs There you go. Uh, so it will start um, basically asking you to download them and whatnot. Um, so I just clicked on save file. Um, you can open with the archive manager if you want to, but it's up to you, whichever way you want to do it. Um, I won't do that again because uh, I've already got them twice, I think. So uh, let's kill that one as well. You've basically downloaded them run the uh, make command in that directory um, so obviously change the directory first so um, if you're in home cd to download um, I've not been using uh, Linux uh, for very long uh, not this flavor um, mint I've probably had it on this computer for about three weeks now so I'm by no means an expert um, I've just muddled my way through and uh, spent a few hours trying to get myself uh, my head around it um, it seems to be getting there uh, it's a good little system especially if you've got a computer that's uh, not um, not that modern or one that can't get another operating system to work on um, I'm currently running this on a 21 inch iMac from 2013 I think it is um, basically the hard disk went on it um, shoved the spare hard disk in there, tried to reinstall OS X uh, and basically the the newest version I could install was Yosemite um, which is okay but it's um, a bit of a problem when you're trying to get onto the internet it just keeps coming up with certificate errors and all sorts of rubbish like that so um, I just decided to bin that in and uh, give uh, Mint a go and it seems to be uh, doing the job so far. Anyway, so uh, we're now in the downloads folder. Um, if you do ls to list the directory contents, um, you'll get a list of everything that's in there. Um, I've probably got a lot more in my directory than what you may have, or different files, because I've done this already. Um, but basically this is what comes up. Um, this whole process makes this file here. The, the KO file and that's the one that puts the drivers 
um, onto your system. That how that's how I understand it anyway. So once you're in the downloads folder and you you're in here, you just run make. Uh, so you got make file here. Uh, so basically that um, that make file runs that uh, and does all the bits and pieces for you. Uh, once you've done that, it's a good idea to type in new name slash r uh, hyphen r what, yeah whatever you want to call it um, to get your kernel version because you're going to need that to find the directory that you're going to need to stick it into later on. So type in new name r and then it should tell you which version you're using. So I am presently on um, slash 71, so 5.4.0 slash 71. When I put these uh, drivers on, it was about a week or so ago, um, I was on slash 70. Um, today there was an update um, notification come through, so I, I ran that, which is why it's slightly different. I'm now on 71. Uh, basically, once you've um, found out which version you've got, it's probably a good idea, well you're going to need to actually, to go into um, File Manager and go into File System. Because what you need to do is to find um, the folder that's um, this one's pointing to, your uh, that we just did through Uname. So go into lib, uh, there we go, and then modules, I think it is, yeah, modules. So you're gonna have to scroll down a little bit. There we go, modules. And then it will give you um, the version of your um, kernel. If you've done several updates, you'll find more than one folder in here. Um, but it's the latest one that you're gonna need. Um, and that is going to basically give you the naming convention because it'll have something else on the end here, generic, uh, and you'll need that otherwise it won't work. Um, back in terminal, um, basically um, copy the KO file that was made earlier on to lib modules generic of your kernel number. And if you go into this, uh, you'll see kernel, and then you should see drivers, and then down the bottom will be USB. There you go. And then serial. So that's basically where it's going to go, in amongst all these. You can see you've got other KO files. Um, so that copy it. Once it's copied in there, you need to basically, um, from what I can understand, insert it to the system. Um, so basically you're inserting the module files um, and you use um, these two commands here. So sudo, which basically gives you the uh, administrative privileges to insert it into the kernel or system, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and the command is insmod um, and then the directory of where it's going to go to and the, the file. Uh, do that the same um, with the file that you made um here so the cp210x ko file this is the one that you want i think this one here is in the system already um it just i don't know sticks it back in there for you um, because you're doing this uh, once that's done you should then hopefully find uh, your cp210 ko file in there um, from what i can understand you can't just copy in it. You have to do this ins mod um, to insert the module into the kernel. Um, once that's done, um, I would suggest that you restart your system just to make sure that it picks up these drivers. Um, once you've done that, you can then go into um, your JMRI. Um, I'll, go, I'll go through via Panel Pro. Select your profile, um, that's the one I want. And then you're gonna need to go into preferences. Now, mine's already there. If it's black, like this one is, it means it's working. Um, but chances are you won't have anything there yet because um, especially if you've only just installed um, JMRI, um, there won't be anything there. If you've 
come across from a different system, um, then you may have something in there already. Um, but go into preferences. And then you should have an option, you have the plus sign to you're basically the, the only one that's here, the tab, to create um, a new connection. Um, sorry for the squeaky chair. Um, you'll have a drop down list for your manufacturer. Um, scroll down until you find NCE. Um, you need to select the USB um, option because that's what we're using, it's a USB interface. And under settings, you'll need to select the serial port um, and it should just have created for you the TTY USB zero. Um, that's the basically what we've gone through the previous process uh, with make file and all the rest of it. Uh, it should now put that in there for you. Um, select whichever system you, you're using. Um, I'm using the power, power cab. Um, just select whichever one of these you need. Um, a word about this, um, depending on which one you're using will depend on which jumper settings you will need on your USB interface. Um, and it's a good idea to go to the NCE website and download the latest information sheet for that interface. Because chances are, if you like the one that I got, um, the information sheet is dated 2012, it's now 2021, um, and it's just a little bit out of date. Um, and one of the biggest problems I found is I could not find on there anything to do with the um, details for J1, jumper one, uh, with those jumpers. Um, basically, J what J1 does is it um, sets the speed. And if your speed doesn't match what the board thinks it should be, then it's just not going to work. This bit over here is just going to be in red. Um, basically, means the connection's not working. So, um, have a look at the information sheet. There will be a um, <coughs> a table with all the jumper settings on there. I don't know if I've got a download of that. Oh, yes, possibly. Let's have a look at that. I think it's the, the old one now. Um, let's, let's bring that up and have a look. Right. Um, let's make that bigger. Right, let's have a look. Yeah, this is the, the old one, unfortunately. So you'll need to find a new one. Um, but basically what you need is this table here. I'm afraid it's um, the wrong orientation. Um, but basically you need to have a look through whichever one you're using um, along with whatever version of the firmware or software very, uh, sorry version sorry um, so I've got power cab and 1.65 so I think it's that one power cab or twin 1.65 jumper 2 is off Sorry, that one. Jumper two is off. Three and four are on. But what it doesn't tell you in here is what jumper one should be doing. Um, and on mine, I'm pretty sure J1 is in the on position. Yeah, because off, it means it's at um, 9,600. Um, and basically, we want to run at 9,200. Um, <coughs> So if that if you if that setting is not matched up with the jumper setting on the board, um, this bit will just fail. Uh, so make sure that matches your board and what's on the table, and it should all work fine. Um, once you've done that, you can just click on save, and then it may take a little while, a few seconds or so, um, for this to come up as black. If it comes up as red, just give it a little while. And then hopefully in a few seconds, basically I think what this does is it polls the system on a regular basis um, to see to make sure that this is working and that it's got a connection there. Um, and it'll pick it up and as long as those settings are correct, it should go black and you won't get any problems. Um, and then you should be able to start 
setting your system up for um, your layout if you haven't already, you know, if you haven't already got an existing system. Uh, it's fairly um, easy and straightforward to do. There's plenty of videos on YouTube um, to give you the, you know, a good head start. Um, if you um, basically um, need to put your um, your locos on, um, make sure you're using a programming track. Um, I tried to do it on the main and had all sorts of problems. Um, basically, it looked like it was connecting to the or trying to, you know, find the information on the <coughs> the static decoders for like things like the pipe motors and stuff like that. It just they were just turning on and turning off again, um, or the other way around, I should say. And the locos would do a little bit of a judder, move backwards and forwards a little bit. Um, and that's it and it just come up and say no loco found um, so stick your locos on programming track and do it that way and it should go through without any problems um, and then you can go through the rest of it and set up panels and all the rest of it um, set up your points and your routes and all that sort of stuff I should do some more videos later on uh, for setting up different parts but hopefully this should be enough to Get you up so you can at least um, interrogate your system for your um, your locos um, and yeah have fun right until the next video see you later